Hey everybody, it's Daryl back again with Networthy Farms. We're out here in the wind, so hopefully the wind's not going to be too bad today. Oh, we're on this video. Uh, we're dodging rain showers. They're all the way around us right now, but what I'm doing out here today is trying to get some of these ditches filled up and some of my plumbing finished. With the beds that are side by side, which I've got to go get some more of these bins, but uh, I'm using the little tees. They go from side to side. Now the reason why I've got on and off valves on all these beds, as you can see that one, uh, is so I can turn the beds off if there's nothing in them, and I can also control flow rates with those two. Uh, I've got to do some research and find me some controllers online that would just, you know, turn on and off at certain times or certain days or whatever. and. Uh, that way I can water these without having to actually be here. You know, so if we go somewhere on the weekends, we ain't got to worry about somebody coming by and try to make sure the flowers or the uh, vegetables are watered and all that good stuff. But another thing I'm doing, I've took this hydrant out. And that was right here. I'm gonna try to get it where it's not going home. There was a hydrant right here and I took it out and I'm gonna end up putting it over here where all my controls and stuff's gonna be. As you can see, I've got two PPC lines run through and that black pipe is what was originally run from the wheel. But uh, I'm gonna run power from over here because I've already had that uh, over here to start with. I've just never hooked it up. And I'm gonna come out of it and go back around over there where my controls are at. So in case any of that stuff over there needs power, we'll be able to uh, supply that. Uh, but there's where we're at now. As you can see, I've got the pipe done on that and the pipe one done on this. Putting the pipe on there is a pain in the butt. A very very big pain in the butt because if you don't cut it straight down the uh the top of the pipe then it's gonna be uh crooked and it's just it's a pain in the butt but anyway the good thing about that is is once it's on there it's there i don't think that'll be the replace for many 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 years so that's what we got lots of work lots of sweat equity as they like to uh, say on uh uh hgtv so we've got that done. The blue tarp back here in the back, right there, it's got a uh, compost in it. I filled one more bed up. I've got enough to probably do the other two beds that I've got here now. So it won't be long here in North Carolina. We'll be uh, getting ready to start planting. So that's where we're at right now. Just want to give y'all an update before I filled all these ditches up. But there's it. There it is. Uh, hopefully all this will pay out in time. I talked to a lady at Lowe's the other day and she was like, I tried doing raised beds one time and we had issues with fire ants. That's probably gonna be an issue because I've had, you know, fire ant issues in these other beds over here, but uh, diatomaceous earth, diatomaceous earth is how you say it. Uh, it's organic and it kills fire ants. Uh, if you don't want to use the regular old fire ant stuff to buy the, the chain stores or whatever else, you can actually buy a bag of that and put it on fire ant hills and it will kill them. Uh, believe it or not so there you go that's a little wrap up of what we got going on and a little tip on how to organically kill fire ants so there you go hope y'all doing good and as always we'll see y'all on the next one